Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, and let me first thank the President-elect of the National Council of Resistance of Iran, Madame Maryam Rajavi. The survivors of brutal prosecutions, family and friends of the victims of 1988 massacre, their sobering testimonies today moved all of us. I want to greet the distinguished audience, activists and journalists, my dear friends and colleagues from Human Rights Council and other uh, walks of life. My heartfelt greetings to those following this conference abroad, especially to brave Iranians in Albania, bordering country, to Montenegro, my country of origin. Ditmir to all of you in Albania. My special sympathy and condolences and heartfelt feelings for um, those 30,000 of lives that vanished as a daughter of political prisoner in former Yugoslavia. I feel very emotional today. And I'm sure that my father, who uh, was lucky enough to come back after four years and pass away uh, surrounded by love and the family, is walking, marching today with those 30,000 and more victims that are carrying light of hope for the future of Iran. We are at the eve of 35th anniversary or commemoration of the 1988 massacre. And in the light of the continued impunity of the regime in Iran. Dear friends, as um, leader Rajavi mentioned many years ago, it is impossible to break the seal of impunity of the religious tyranny without changing regime in Tehran. <laughs> 43 years after the establishment, the Islamic Republic of Iran lacks legitimacy amongst Iranians at home and the international arena. The people did not choose their leaders through free and fair elections, since the authorities are neither transparent, accountable, nor competent. Iran is facing a high level of corruption and human rights violation on the one side, and a system that cannot provide the bare minimums for its people on the other. Internationally, the Islamic Republic of Iran is considered a threat to regional stability and world peace, and is, um, its leaders face isolations and sanctions. The world's largest state sponsor of terrorism has been a greedy and ungrateful political, diplomatic, and business partner. In light of some appeasement policies Tehran carried out dozens of terrorist attacks across Europe and continued funding militant groups in the Middle East, threatening not only Western values, but also universal declaration of human rights and all that humanity stands for. Let us call from this podium regime in Tehran to repeal fatwa because they are still operating under that rule. To repeal fatwa and to release all political prisoners let us call Secretary General of the UN and High Commissioner of the Human Rights Council to request regime in Tehran to repeal fatwa and to release all political prisoners without delay. <clears throat> the 
Dear friends, more than half of current Iran citizens were not born, were not alive at the time of 1979 re revolution, and many were at the time were not born at the time of 1988 massacre. Now entering the fifth decade in the power of the brutal barbaric regime in, uh, in Tehran, the international community is facing a challenging, uh, challenging period. How to support and transmit the commitments of the UN Declaration of Human Rights at the 75th anniversary of that declaration? For this new generation of Iran on the rise that is demanding accountability and changes in the country. Domestic avenues for accountability remain weak and ineffective, including past and present violations in the context of recent protests. While there have been some investigation into several incidents, most resulted in inconclusive, confusing outcomes with very few leading to the accountability of alleged perpetrators. Despite the many efforts of human rights defenders and civil society organizers to document these crimes and advocate for accountability of those responsible, justice and truth for the victims, the Iranian regime has never acknowledged Never, the facts of ad, uh, admitting its involvement in 1988 massacre or any of the continuous brutal killings and barbarian executions of the regime. Many perpetrators have remained in high position of power today and no trial have been held in Iran. Some of those have not only been prosecuted, for the crimes, but have even been glorified as national heroes who fought against terrorism. The only success was a Swedish court sanctioning former Iranian official Hamid Nouri in May 2022 to life in prison over crimes related to 1988 massacres under the principle of universal jurisdiction. And congratulations again to lawyer Kenneth Miles, who uh, really explained and elaborated uh, what kind of uh, unique process and successful process that was. During the recent Iranian Democratic Opposition Annual International Women's Day event for 2023, uh, um, Ms. Rajadi has said that uh, not simply women's rights to either veil or not veil are questioned, but the right of women to make choices about their personal life. It is the right of women to be able to choose their leaders. And I would add here today, it is the right of women to be the leaders of the future Iran. Ladies and gentlemen, my speech was like full of accountability mechanism, judicial, non-judicial, um, all kinds of recommendations and uh, uh, evaluation from different Human Rights Council rapporteur uh, uh, statements and findings. But let me just finish by saying that 30th of August, is International Day of the Victims on, of Enforced Disappearance. So in two weeks, in two months, we will have an important day to remember all that disappeared, that there were cut off possibilities and full potential of human life. More than a human rights violation against the individual enforced disappearance has frequently been used to spread terror within society. And that's what's going on in Iran. Hundreds of thousands have been vanished during conflicts of, or periods of repression in at least 85 countries worldwide. worldwide. And Iran stands at the far front of this list. 
We want to correct that. We want to have Iran that all people can manage their everyday life and well-being, and they can accomplish their full potential of their life and their talents. Let's send, <laughs> let's send a united message from this table to the High Commissioner for Human Rights on the occasion of August 30th, the International Day of Victims of Enforced Disappearance. It is high time to establish this long-awaiting institution, the Independent International Commission for Inquiry, with an international mandate to clarify the fate and whereabouts of missing and forcibly disappeared person in Iran's massacre in 1988. And all disappeared in continuous brutal uh, killing and uh, torture in Iran these days. <laughs> Establishing the truth is essential for victims, survivors, families, and society to move forward. As recently as June 19, serious UN expert urge General Assembly to establish a human rights body to meaningfully address the tragedy of missing and forcibly disappeared persons in Syria after 12 years. Iran massacre 1988 and continuing violation of applicable laws deserve similar action from the United Nations. The upcoming oral report of the fact-finding mission for Iran must be just a step towards a more robust mechanism of accountability. UN Human Rights Council must not stay silent and must step up in confronting the persistent impunity in Iran and any state or government at any time. I thank you very much.